Well, praise the Lord. How you doing? Do you recruit your life applications officer? Um, I just did a video um, and I got cut off because uh, I had everything filled up on my phone. I do all my videos off my phone. Pretty soon I will be in the near, very, very near future getting myself an actual camera um, to do my YouTube videos on. But as for now, I'm content with my phone. I have a very nice phone. And I do all my recordings off my phone, believe it or not. And uh, if you look at some of my older videos from last year, you'll see that uh, they were actual you know, um, smartphone videos, but this hair camera, you can't tell. But anyway, praise the Lord. Um, I just recently did a, a video talking about goodness, goodness and people. Are you good? Only in your imagination. Nobody is good but the Lord. We talked about that in the last video. Um, last time I did this video, it was raining outside. And uh, it was raining pretty hard. And I have a leak over here um, in my roof that my landlord keeps fixing and fixing and fixing. And somehow water keeps getting through there and when I did uh, this the first part of this video last week it sounded like so close I kept looking up because it felt it sounded like it was dripping I got a bucket over there in case um, it drips but it didn't drip but it's still, you can tell it's coming through the roof, but it's not coming through my towel. And the towel was all wet, but yet it wasn't as hard as it was raining, you know. So you can tell he, he, he did do something up there. He just didn't do a perfect job, I guess. But praise the Lord. Um, God is keeping me day by day, one day at a time. I can't, I can't complain. I can't complain. God is so good. Um, how do I know God is good? God is not good because he, uh, you know, got me a bunch of wonderful things for Christmas. Or he, uh, he you know, helped me win the lottery. Or he... Uh, Destroyed all my enemies, you know. Um, he brought some hot, sexy woman into my life who's going to become my wife. And, you know, she's got her eyes on nobody but me. That's not what happened. Wishful thinking, but it didn't happen that way. That is not why God is good. God is good. Because whenever I put my faith and trust in him, okay, whenever I put my faith and trust in him, it works to do so. And as I told you in the last video, I prayed for my enemies. And this is what happened. I prayed for my enemies and this is what happened and why do I call them my enemies because as much as I disagree with them but try to love them at the same time and be merciful and let you know we just agree to disagree which a lot of people that don't know the Lord have a problem with that they don't know how to they don't know how to agree to disagree. They feel that it's got to be their way. They have to win. And what I'm going through, what I went through last week, 
was jealousy coming at me from some people. Jealousy and hatred and I already said, you know, sometimes the biggest form of hatred comes from my own people, black folks. And that's just a fact. This is not the Colin Flaherty channel. This is not Colin Flaherty taking videos to show you, you know, how stupid black people are. This is, this is D-Roy Cruz, an African-American, showing you that black folks got to, black folks only have one chance in here in America. They only have one, they, there's only one thing that's going to help them. And that one thing also involves another thing. And that is, as I just read, and as I'm getting ready to read, that is that they need to accept Jesus Christ as their personal Savior. Now, everybody needs to accept Jesus Christ as their personal Savior. But black folks are in a situation that is destroying them. And it is causing them to be a hazard an actual hazard in this country. A safety hazard, a political hazard, a health hazard, a spiritual hazard. Okay? And I'm not talking about all black people where I'd be talking about myself and my own family and, and every black person that I get along with. I'm talking about, you know who I'm talking about. I'm talking about black people that got that chip on their shoulder. And this is not a black video. I'm just using this as an, ex as a, an example because I mentioned them in the last video. I got plenty of black videos, though. You can check them out if you want. But anyway, this here is to say that a lot of times the people that hurt you the most to tear you down the worst are people of your own family, your own race, okay? However, the guy that was trying to be my rival and show me up in front of everybody and show me how tough he was last week when I did the first video of this segment, um, he's gone. My boss called me the next day day. No, she called me after my, she called me, yeah, she called me the next day, the very next day she called me. She called me the very next day before I could get to work. He's gone. And I prayed for him and he's gone. That might be a blessing for him. And a blessing for me, or it might be a blessing for me and a horrible thing for him. My prayer is that it will be a blessing for both of us. Because I have no hatred towards the man. I just think he needed to catch up with himself. Okay? The girl that hates me. Okay? She wants to switch shifts. And at first I felt like... You, you, she's going to get away with murder. But you know what? She's not. You know, first of all, it's good that she wants to switch shifts. Okay? Um, because she won't be my problem. She'll be somebody else's problem. And not only that, um, other people on the shift that she wants to go to the shift that she wants to go to, and you, and, and you know, when I say this, you know what shift I'm talking about. Everybody is a little bit more professional. Everybody is more grouchy. And people nitpick about more things. Way more than they do on my shift. And there's more people. Everything is more, 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 more on that shift. But she wants to move to that shift. So... God bless her. Hold on a second.
God bless her heart. You know, at first I was thinking, man, don't let her. She just wants to switch shifts so she can do what she want to do. But you know what? I'm not there to watch her. So when she gets in trouble, I'm not there to babysit her anymore. And I'm glad I won't have to babysit her anymore when she switches shifts. But when she switches shifts... Um, if she cuts up and somebody decides to say something about it, oh, they're going to say something about it. And she can, she can try to box with me when I say stuff. And I tell her, you know, what, what the policies and procedures are. She can get mad with me. But they will not tolerate it on first shift. They won't tolerate it at all. And everybody there that is a supervisor is my supervisor. My supervisor, my boss, works the first shift. And the people above her work the first shift. Okay? This girl's not going to get away with anything. She might not get written up as much as I would write her up. But the thing is, once somebody drops a hammer down on her, it's going to be... She's going to be hammered. Once someone drops a hammer down on her, She's going to be hammered. Romans chapter 2. As I was reading last week. Um, and I got cut off because. Uh, I had too much activity on my phone. And uh, I had to delete some of it. Chapter 2. Romans 1 to 5. Therefore you are inexcusable as I said before. O oh man, whoever you are who judge, for in whatever you judge another, you condemn yourself. For you who judge practice the same things. Isn't that the truth? You know as well as I know a lot of people who will sit there and look down their nose at you. That's like somebody telling you, you know, um... That's like somebody telling you how to pay attention. And then they get in their car and they text while they're driving. They say, oh, you need to pay attention. What's going on? You don't pay attention. You seem to not pay attention very well. But then they get in their car and they're like this. texting while they're driving. I saw a guy doing that today. And he was driving fast too. And he was texting with his right hand while he was holding the wheel with his left. I mean, he needs to be pulled over, really. But that's how people are. People will sit there and say things to you and condemn you and look down their nose at you about certain things. But they do them too. They're really not that much different. If you ain't paying attention to where you walking. Or paying attention to who's at the window. But you ain't paying, but somebody else ain't paying attention when they're driving. They're not paying attention to the road because they're looking at their phone or they're looking out the side windows instead of the front. Which one's worse? Okay. So you are inexcusable who have that kind of attitude. But we know that the judgment of God. A lot of people want to get rid of God today. But let me tell you something about God. But we know that the judgment of God is according to truth. Against those who practice such things. According to truth against those who practice such things. And do you think this, O oh man, you who judge those practicing such things, and doing the same, that you will escape the judgment of God? In other words, you're only as good as you are blameless. Nobody's perfect. And if you read the Bible very carefully, even though 
God tells you, be perfect for I am perfect, but you need to read it very carefully and put all the scriptures together. You'll find out. You'll never be perfect as he is perfect, but you can try, but you can be blameless. You can be blameless, but you're only as good as you are blameless. And I'll get to more of that in a second. Or do you despise the riches of his goodness? He must be talking to God's people here. The riches of his goodness, forbearance and long suffering, not knowing that the goodness of God leads you to repentance. I repent every day. Why? Because of the goodness of God, because I am in the secret place. I am of the royal priesthood, the peculiar people. I repent every day. Every time I get into a scuffle, a quarrel with someone, I repent. Even though I could easily point the finger and put it all on them and get about probably a hundred people to agree with me. I repent first, and I apologize first. Even though I might be right, it starts with me, okay? Because I understand, so it starts with me. And you, if you are a Christian, it goes the same for you. Always starts with you first, because why? You know better. The world don't always know better. People, the children of disobedience, the people of the devil, don't always know better. But we Christians, we have a spirit of understanding and discernment. We know better. So therefore, it starts with us. But in accordance with the hardness of your impotent heart, you are treasuring up for yourself wrath in the day of wrath and revelation of the righteous judgment of God. And people in the world don't understand that. They don't understand that everything that they do against the nature of God is being calculated. And it adds up. And they will be charged for it on the day of judgment. That's what this is saying. They will be charged for it on a day of judgment. You know how a lot of people, they keep on and keep on and keep on skipping their taxes and all like that. And then one day when they thought they had some money, the government was just waiting for them to get that money. And then the government charged them. And not only did they lose all the money that they made, but now they got a garnishment coming out of their check every month, taking over half of what they make. After all their extra money is gone. You don't want to mess with God. And when you reject Jesus Christ and persecute his people, his children. God's people, his, his, his bride. When you persecute the church, when you hate on other Christians. When you misjudge and mistreat and abuse the people of God. Okay, you abuse yourself because judgment is coming. You will be judged for it. You will be punished for it. Okay, you're about to get your feelings hurt really bad. You're only as good, though, Christians, as you are blameless. And I'm sick and tired. One of the things that has been bugging me for the last two weeks is getting into this textual criticism thing. There's a war between King James only people and people of the other Bibles. And I can understand there being a divide, but I don't understand how you build a cult and say that people that don't read the Bible that you read, or should I say the translation that you read, okay, 
uh, are heretics and they're on their way to hell and they're not Christians. They're not born again. They're, 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 you know, you say all kinds of nasty things about them. On the flip side of that, how does somebody, how, how is somebody so idiotic that they think that they can take a Bible that's not a word for word standard? Okay. And judge a Bible that is word for word. You can judge a standard with a paraphrase. Okay. That's that's just really backwards. Okay. Um, needs to stop. Needs to stop. But you're only as good as you are blameless. You cannot be perfect. God knows that. Even though he said be perfect for I am perfect. You will not be perfect. If anybody thinks that they're perfect, I bet you think you a lot of other things in a bag of chips too with your arrogant behind. It ain't going to happen. I repent every day. You're only as good as you are blameless. You can't be perfect, but you can be blameless. And the Lord dealt with me about that this week with these, these people that I just mentioned. And I prayed for him, and what happened? The girl, the girl, um, the one girl wants to switch shifts. The one dude to try to be my rival, he's gone. The other dude that hates me, he's getting, he's resigning. These people are getting out of my way, and and they may go out, and they may say on their other job, that they hated working, you know, at my place of business because of the leadership, because of a little short, you know, dude that thought he was a real supervisor, or a little short punk, or whatever, you know, whatever, you know, I didn't do anything malicious to them, I might not have been a perfect supervisor, but one thing I ain't is malicious, I'm not malicious, Okay, that's one thing I refuse to be. You can hate me all you want to, but I'll never hate you so much that I need to keep up coming up with malicious ways to get up under your skin. I will never do that to you. Okay. Um, Luke 6, 32. Luke 6, 32. You need to know this. Everybody knows these verses. I want you to see something here. Six thirty two. But if you love those who love you, what credit is that to you? For even sinners love those who love them. You don't get no credit. I don't get credit for loving somebody because they love me. I, I'm cool. Well, you know, I'm cool with Jake because Jake is cool with me. There's no credit to that for that. That's one. That's two dogs staying in their own corner. That there's no credit for that. If you love those who love you, what credit is that? To you, for even sinners love those who love them. And that's what we got on in the social arena every day. People like those and love those who love them. And it's not really love, it's more like like. Because somebody might like you and they may do something. Like you might come in and you might be complaining about your check. And how short it was. They may loan you $40. And whether you pay it back or not, and, and whether you pay it back on time or not, are you going to loan them $40 when they go through the same thing? Actually, in all respect of love, you ought to do more than that. Okay? I don't like people doing more for me than I could ever possibly do for them. I don't like that. I really don't. I don't like that. Um, uh, 
Where where am I at here? What I do lose it? Um. But if you love those who love you, what credit is that to you for even sinners? Love those who love them. So that lets you know right there. We say that all of us are sinners, but that's not what the Bible says. This, Jesus said there's a difference between sinners and God's people. We're all saved. We're all human, but we're not all sinners. When we say that we are sinners saved by grace, we're not saying that we're sinners. We are saying that we are blameless. Why? Because we did what we were supposed to do for God. We follow the commandment of God. We follow the call of God. Okay, it's just like when you're in the army. Arm, the army, the military is very, very, very strict about this. How do you stay blameless in, in the army, in the military? Soldiers in the military are always blameless. Because why? They got all these supervisors over them and they don't do anything. Um, the way they would want to do it. They don't do anything based on how they feel. You are taught when you're in the military to do things according to commandment. You were commanded to go to Iraq. You don't get to say, well, I think we're being too hard on Muslims. You can feel that way, but you can't let that come out of your mouth. You can't, you know what I'm saying, because you were sent to war and you don't get to rebel. Even if you disagree, you don't get to rebel. And I talked about that last week too. But we're talking about love here. I don't just love black people. I don't just love Americans. I don't just love my children. I don't just love Christians, but I love everybody. Love the sinner, hate the sin. Okay? You say, that's impossible. Well, what's possible on your end, Mr. Atheist? When you say, when you, you say you hate when we say love, love the sinner, hate the sin. Okay. So what, does that mean that you love the Christian, you just hate the religion? Huh? Leave Christian stuff alone because it's over your head. Leave it alone. Because it's not like you love the Christian and you just hate the religion. Okay? Anybody can go to my channel... Well, we're on that channel. Anybody can go to my videos on atheism and you'll find out that atheists actually hate Christians with a passion. And I can show you videos here on YouTube where atheists hate Christians with a passion. Everything from burning Bibles all the way to putting their hands on Christians. So don't tell me it's impossible for us to love the sinner and hate the sin because we actually do invite the sinners to church and when they walk out of church and they mock us we don't we don't go looking for a riot or looking for a way to beat them up we just let it go let it go move on to the next person our job is to preach the gospel not take it personal but just preach the gospel okay that's our job Um, and if you lend to those from whom you hope to receive back, what credit is that to you? For even sinners lend to sinners to receive as much back. So creditors, loan sharks, the payday loan people, okay? They don't really necessarily love you. It's just business. 
But you, people that know how evil that is, shouldn't be that way. That's why I say, are you good? No, you are not. Because you do whatever it takes to make money, even if it's criminal. You do whatever it takes to get sex, even it means even if it means disrespect for women or disrespect for men or dis, disrespect for somebody's emotions or feelings. Okay? You do whatever it takes to get what you want in life, no matter how you have to step on somebody else to get it. So are you good? No, you are not. One of the things that shows me that people are not good every day, number one I've done a video on, is cigarette smoking. Shows you how people are natural born sinners. Why does victims of disease smoke and are willing to get into a brawl with you, with the crippled behind, when you tell them you can't smoke on the property and you show them where they can smoke. Had a confrontation today with a sick lady and her guests. And this dumb lady, she basically got this woman's wheelchair sitting in her lap. So I go up to the woman that's sitting behind the wheelchair that basically got it sitting there between her legs. And I, I see the cigarette coming out of the wheelchair. Okay. The cigarette smoke coming out of the wheelchair. So instead of going to this, this, this crippled lady, for whatever reason she's in the wheelchair, I go to her, her friend that came to visit her. I said, excuse me, ma'am. We're not allowed to smoke here on UPMC property. She looked at me and said, I'm not smoking. You see that? Are you good? No, you are not. She knew that I was talking about her friend. But she immediately tried to act like she was a victim for herself. So, you know, what kind of game are you playing? You know, you will her out here. And you're out here sitting with her while she's smoking on the property. People are natural born sinners. Now she wants to tell me she's not smoking. So what, I'm supposed to look at this crippled lady that's smoking who can't get nowhere unless this woman wills her and I'm supposed to say, excuse me, you got to go down to the front of the property. Knowing that this woman got to will her down there. People are natural born sinners. Americans need to repent like there's no tomorrow. Really. Cigarette smoking is the first thing that shows that we are sinners and that we need a God in our life. Anytime you let something little like a cigarette cause, you, cause war in America, cause war among people and businesses, okay? The other thing is pride. People take on jobs and they make money, okay, and they get that, you know, they get that promotion. They get that good job, make that good money. And then they start looking down their nose at other people and they start talking different and acting different when all along when they go home, they're just like the rest of us. But they try to go to work and put on this attitude. And not only do they put on this attitude where they try to make it look like they come from a different world than you. Okay. But they talk to you like you're such a little soldier because they know that they could pay your rent three times over. 
in one in 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 one paycheck. They know that they could they know that they could uh you know fix your car for you and keep on driving their own while they buy another car or whatever. You know, they know that they they live a more abundant financial life than you, but the scripture says, woe to those that are rich in this world, but not rich towards God. We have a lot of pride in the workplace. Okay. Meanwhile, while everybody that's rich and everybody that's poor alike got a very nasty cigarette habit. Are you good? No, you are not. Forget about it. You're not good. You're not nice. You might be nice to people when you're at work until you get home and talk about them all like a dog. But you're not good to God. You're not good to Him at all. But love your enemies. Oh, Lord, this is where the Lord dealt with me. Love your enemies. Who's that? The very people that I mentioned. The people that want to be your rival. The people that want to slander you and lie about you and try to get you to lose your job. Like it says in Psalms, they want to pull you down from your high position. people that are racist towards you, you'll never be anything because you're black. Or there is no forgiveness for you because you're white. Okay? Or you don't belong here because you're not white or black. And in my other videos, I talk about that about people that don't belong in this country, but it's not because of their nationality, their race, or the color of their skin that they don't belong here. It's because they are rebellious about our American culture and goals and policies and procedures that we have here in America. That's why they don't belong here. There's some black folks that don't belong here. There's a lot of white folks that don't belong here. And they, if they went and they and they want to talk about white nationalism, but guess what? If they went over to Russia or Germany, well, not Germany anymore. That's being taken over by Muslims. So is half of Europe. Okay, if I'm saying that correctly. Okay, but if they went over to Russia and they acted a fool like they do here in America. They would find out all that whiteness, that white pride don't really work outside of the United States. Okay? Love your enemies, do good, and lend, hoping for nothing in return. When you do good to somebody, you do good to somebody because they need somebody to do good to them. You do good because good is of God. You do good because good is of God. Not because you want somebody to... Guy walked up to me the other day. He said, hey man, tell him. Tell him about me. Because I gave him a compliment and I told him how somebody gave him a compliment and I wanted him to know that he was being complimented. But it wasn't for him to like take it to his head. He says to me. He walked up to me when I was talking to some other guys. He said hey man tell him about me. Tell him about what I did. You know. But love your enemies do good. And lend hoping for nothing in return. And your reward will be great. God will bless you. For being a godly person. 
a man or woman of God. He will bless you. Believe me when I tell you. God will bless you for being a godly person. Love your enemies, do good, and lend, hoping for nothing in return, and your reward will be great. What reward? Your reward in heaven, if you look at the other three Gospels. And you will be sons of what? The Most High. See, everybody's not a son of the Most High. You got to be born again by God's Spirit and the blood of Christ. You have to be changed. Okay, Mr. Fearless. Okay, always quoting the Bible on top of garbage. Where people don't really give a rat's behind. No. This is talking to people who think that there's some, something that they're not. Okay, hoping for nothing in return and your reward will be great and you will be sons of the Most High. Everybody's not sons and daughters of the Most High, Mr. Fearless. You have to believe in Christ Jesus and live a life that's pleasing to him first. For he is kind to the unthankful and evil. And here I am calling this girl who hates me the B word. Rhymes with witch. If you know what I mean. I cannot call a woman that. I cannot call my worst enemy a witch. Okay? Even though witches are worthy of death. Okay? And atheists don't know nothing about no witches. If they understood what, what witches were all about in the days that witches were being killed, they'd be saying, hey, help us find some witches so we can kill them, some real witches. Okay? There are real witches out there today, and there is a witch culture that is arising as we speak. But God is kind to the unthankful and evil. Therefore, be merciful, just as your Father also. Your Father in heaven is also merciful. And that was God's message to me. I might not be perfect, but I can forgive. I can be merciful. I can love those that hate me. Are you good? If you think that was a bunch of bull crap that I just read, no, you're not good. And you might not be able to be perfect, but you can be blameless. You can be merciful and forgiving and loving. In Jesus' name, thank you for watching. I will talk to you again in another video. Thanks for uh, subscribing to my channel. Talk to you soon.